Hello there, I'm Black Bright and welcome to my channel. Subscribe, share, like, all that kind of stuff. And um, today I, well, I was listening to a video um, by another vlogger and they were talking about how Trump is now um, rejecting all of those applications that green hard card holders have put in. Now there's about 4 million green card holders application. Some people have been waiting years, up to seven years, they've been waiting for this application to go through. And for whatever reason, they have, they've been, it, it, there's a backlog basically. Now, I don't know if I'm a psychic or what, but I don't know how many of you will remember a video I did about how long it was taking for in the UK for um, visa applications to be processed. It's supposed to be done in six months. Now it's on average of two years. And some people are saying it's to deter people from applying. It's because of the hostile environment policy, all that kind of stuff. But like I said, America and the UK are working together. What are the odds? I wish I had a bet on this. But I bet you, in a few months down the line, the same way that Trump has said he's going to reject all of those applications and everybody has to reapply on a point-based system that the UK is going to follow suit. Because they've already got their merit-based system, which is the same as the point-based system. They just call it different words. Everything they're doing is parallel. It's only that UK is a couple of steps behind, or they make us believe they're a few steps behind. But I think they're running parallel. Now, you've got over 4 million people. Now, you know, um, 4 million people is a lot of people to be waiting to get into America. And the thing is, is that Trump wants to stop the chain migration. And so, of course, he's preventing all those people who were supposed to come in as family members. They all have to come in, reapply on this point space system and uh, you make sure they're not going to be a public charge. And you know what one of the criteria of a public charge is? Is that they have to be earning more than 31000 a year. Now, in America, I think that's probably pretty feasible, but I'm not quite sure about the rates of pay over there. I know over here it'd be hard to achieve 31000 Maybe it's hard to achieve over there. But that is the standing point for their family their siblings, whoever they plan to bring over to America, that's how much they need to have in the pot for each member. Now, for us over in the UK, I think ours has gone up to about 20,062. It was 18,000. I think, I'm not quite sure if it's 18,000, but I know it kind of, it kind of runs between 18,000 and 20,000, depending on a certain criteria. But OK, let's have a ballpark figure of let's average it out to 20,000 for the UK. That's how much um, somebody who is going to be a dependent has to have in their bank account to make sure that they that person doesn't come and use our universal credit. And in America, they don't want them to become a public charge, which is to use any of their benefits. Now, the thing is, is that. What um, Trump has been saying in the past is it's all been about illegal immigration, but now he's penalising the legal applicants, those who are in the country legally. And guess what? Even though they're in the country legally, and you know when you, you need to renew, ours, we call ours, you know, they're on limited leave to remain, and then they apply for indefinite leave to remain. Well, they've got the equivalent in America. They have a green card. I think it might last for six years, depending on what visa you've come in on. I think H-1B visas are for six years. Anyway, when that visa runs out, you then have to reapply on that points-based system. 
And if you do not pass that points-based system, which is dependent on the way you speak, how good your English is, that you've got an income of more than 31,000, all of those things that prevent you from being a public charge and goodness knows what else. I don't even know what the criteria is. You, and it's all got to do with how um, academic you are as well, what kind of qualifications you have. That application is going to be denied and you are going to be rendered I I illegal immediately, even though you've been legal with your green card all of these years. And, you know, in the UK, it's a similar kind of thing, only they're doing it differently. They're forcing people to starve. They're starving out people who are waiting to have their applications renewed. That's the difference. Over here, I think it's a bit worse because these people, they're not having any access. If they didn't have access before they had, before they applied for indefinitely to remain, they've got no access to public funds. They can't rent. They can't do anything. They can't open up a bank account. They can't drive. So I don't know which is worse. And this is why they were here legally at one point, waiting to have their application approved. And during this period of taking so long, they're not illegal because as long as the application has gone in within a time frame, they are legally in the country. But the fact that they can't do anything while they're waiting is where the burden lies and where the stress lies. Now, supposing now they turn around to all these people who have been suffering and waiting for this application and do the same thing as Trump and say, oh, well, um, we've got too many. We can't handle them. Uh, we're just going to reject every single application we have. And you're going to have to reapply on a merit based system. And if you don't pass this merit based system, we're going to kick you out. You can't stay in the country. And all of those people who were meant to be coming in because you've been waiting, I'm ever so sorry, um, we can't accommodate you. We're following the American template and that's what we're going to do. Uh, what are the odds? I'm not wishing it because it'd be terrible. But that's what they've done in America. You know, they're just waiting for it to go through Congress now. And what are the odds it'll probably get passed? <sighs> what else was I going to say? I wanted to... Um... Okay, the government has been accused of leaving thousands of people in a state of limbo. This is the UK. As figures show, the proportion of UK settlement applicants applications take more than six months to resolve and has almost doubled in three years. Also, lawyers and politicians branded the delays in deciding applications for indefinite leave to remain unacceptable and said that said the fact that waiting times had increased despite drop in applications indicated a drive to deter migrants as a part of the hostile environment. But, you know, these these um, lawyers have a vested interest because they're not getting paid until the deed is done. Unless people have been paying them up front, which wouldn't be fair. But, you know, it's making their life difficult. Then normally it's just a smooth process. They intervene, they sign it off, they have a happy camper. But that's not happening. Their hands are tied. Apparently they rejected one application because there's supposed to be 13 pages and one of those pages is a blank page. The person hadn't put the blank page in and that's why they rejected the application. I mean, they're damn thieves. And all those people, the four million, who've paid nearly a thousand pounds, you know, for the whole process. That's how much the whole process costs to get a green card. I've listed it down here, all the process. You have an interview that's about 200. You have this kind of fee and that kind of fee. It works out to over a thousand pounds. When they when they are when they're saying that they're going to reject all those applications and everybody has to reapply. I hope they're not expecting them to pay again. But the thing is, is that even if they don't expect them to pay, pay again, they're still going to lose the money because the criteria to get into the USA is going to be so high, they can't, they're not going to pass it anyway. I doubt the majority of them are not lawyers and haven't got a skilled engineers. Because if they were skilled engineers and lawyers, they'd probably stay where they were. 
because everybody comes to places like the UK and the US of A because they feel as though they have better opportunities, but not now. You better steer away of there. Honestly. Um, data obtained by the independent through a freedom of information request revealed that more than 10 applicants amounting one more than one in 10 applicants amounting to 8,000 210 people waited for longer than the home office's own six-month customer standard before receiving a decision. What page is that? Where's page two? <sighs> I haven't organised myself very well. So I can't find page two. But I know they said that um, some people are waiting up to two years. In 2007, compared with 6% or 5,627 in 2014. This is despite the fact that the number of applications processed decreased by a fifth in the same period, from 95,651 to 74,952. Apparently, the Home Office um, excuse is that occasional delays um, rose due to the complex nature of certain applications. Occasional delays. I think nearly everyone I've heard from is suffering this. So it's not an occasional delay. There's massive delays. Uh, immigration barrister Jan Dorfeld told the Independent the figures were of considerable concern and raised questions over whether the delays being used to deter valuable migrants as a part of the hostile environment. Well, we know that's what it is. What did I say? I told you I'm a psychic. They don't want people to get through. That's why they've got a zero tolerance on any errors on the application form. If they wanted people to get through, they'd have they'd use a they'd use their discretion, but they don't. They have a machine that goes through it, vets it, and if anything's wrong on that machine, it throws it out, and your application is denied. Zero tolerance. Apparently, um, Trump put that into law in two thousand and seven seventeen that zero tolerance on any errors on application forms, they throw it out. Throw it out, but give the people back their money. <sighs> the data shows that the first six months of 2018, one in 20, in brackets 2,618, who received decision had waited for more than a year in 2017, compared with 1,792, 1.9% 1 in 2014. A total of 221 decisions took more than two years, with 13 claimants waiting for more than a decade. One case took 29 years. How can a case take 29 years? What can be so complicated that it's going to take 29 years for you to sort it out? Oh, that's absolutely ridiculous. Sabir Singh, Chief Executive of the Joint Council for the Welfare of Immigrants, said, We're seeing the waiting time go up in all manner of immigration cases. It's all too common to see people waiting for two years or more for these applications. Saying that case is complex is often used as a convenient way to delay them for long periods of time. It says to obtain UK settlement which grants the right to remain in the UK without a time limit, a person must usually either have lived in the country for more than five years or have a close family member settled in the country. And the cost of applying is £2,389. It's not dibby money for people who can't work and get it back. I, 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 can I say, so far... Uh, the Trump administration, or whoever they are, denied 37% of the applications. Family visas they're rejecting. Um, what else have I got here? Oh, yeah, the public charge in America. This is a criteria. If a person earns less than 31000 per year to support a family of four, that's not bad for a family of four, 
This would be considered a negative factor in the public charge test and a person who supports a family of four would have to earn more than 63,000 per year. Well, that's wrong. So how come they're saying if a person earns less than 31,000 per year to support a family of four, this would be considered a negative? And a person who supports a family of four would have to earn more than 63,000 per year for their income to be considered a heavily positive factor in the test. So they might as well just say you have to be earning over 63,000 for a family of four instead of saying that a family of four, if they earn less than 31,000, is going to be negative. You might as well throw it out completely. If you're earning 31,000, forget it. What they're saying, family of four, you have to be earning 63,000, minimum 63,000 per year. <sighs> what else is this? For example, um, list of other standards for immigration con for officials to consider when in individual... <clears throat> Sorry, list of other standards for Im immigration officials to consider when evaluating an individual case is having limited English speaking skills, physical or mental health conditions that would affect the person's ability to work, attend school or care for themselves. That would be viewed negatively in the total circumstances test. Um, what else? Oh, and listen to this. These people are drilled, you know. Um, it could allow some people applying for a green card to post a public charge bond. How much do you think the public charge bond is? That means it's like a, um, you know, like when you put up your gr grantor for a car or something and they ask you to stand a surety for a car. They're asking people to put up a bond now. If you're going to have any family member, listen to the bond now. In order to, OK, a public charge bond in order to enter the US, to be allowed into the US, a person deemed likely to become a public charge because of their income, a health condition or certain other factors may be required to buy a bond for the minimum of $10,000. They might then lose that money forfeit the bond if they use certain government programs. So if they use, God forbid, they was to use their Medicaid or any public program, they're going to lose that £10,000 bond. Ah, oh dear. So what are the government programs which list added to the list of programs considered as part of the public charge test because anybody I'm, I'm i'm referring to america because believe me folks it's coming to the uk so you just have to look for the equivalent of you know instead of you know because some people they'll say oh it's in america it doesn't apply to us what are you talking about america for like i said you can guarantee what happens in america ends up in England. So I'm just preparing you in advance. Okay? Okay, so healthcare coverage through Medicaid. So that's equivalent to our NHS. They're talking about food stamps, but because we have universal credit, anybody applies for universal credit. That would be, you know, the foreign nationals. It wouldn't be the indigenous people who are born here. It would be foreign nationals who are using these things or those people who are, I mean, they're not allowed to use them anyway, I don't think. They've stopped them from using everything, so I don't know how they're managing. And Section 8 housing vouchers, well, we don't have that. I guess that's the equivalent to our housing benefit. So if you're using housing benefit, NHS and um, food stamps I don't know what the equivalent of food stamps would be but I guess it would be like universal credit if you're using that as well so what can I say what can I say I told you so it's quite interesting though because you know if you do kind of um, pick up things I can pick up the stream the thing is they're telling us point blank they don't want any immigrants in the country and you know so it's not surprising people seem to be surprised that trump is is taking these measures but if he's told you up front we don't we're trying to reduce immigration we don't want immigrants 
in the country, any more immigrants, more than what we already have, how can he justify letting all of these people in, albeit they would be legal immigrants, how can he justify letting 4 million people into the USA? And then because he doesn't know what they'll be earning or how they're going to be supported and they could be a public charge, he's, he's done all of this stuff. And England will do the same. The thing is, is England is a bit, well, I don't know, because people aren't able to access, oh, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that there's a parallel there somewhere and you've got to be careful, people. Anybody who is on indefinite leave to remain, limited leave to remain, discretionary leave to remain, Trump, what Trump's doing in America is going to end up in the UK. You mark my words. Not wishing it, but that's the direction I think it's going. And that's all for now. Bye bye.